Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Chrono JJ. We've got RTS League, the playoffs. It's the semifinals between ATB, the all-time best, and DOD, the deities of death. I'm pretty excited. This should be a pretty awesome match. It's the new kids on the block, ATB versus the perennial playoff participants in DOD. ATB, this is only their second season. Last season, they didn't even make the playoffs. This season, yeah, I was thinking maybe they'd compete for like third place, slide in the playoffs. Well, they exceeded everybody's expectations, maybe even their own. They have not lost a game. They finished the regular season 14 and 0. Really only had like one close game in those 14 wins. Um, so they looked great. Uh, but is it a fluke? Or are they really that good? I guess we'll find out when they play DOD. They finished, I think, what was it, 11 and 3? Second place in their division. They already played their first playoff match against WKT and won 2 to 0. Uh, really, really a really good second game in that match. Uh, but here we are, best of five semifinals. We've got a couple of preset maps. The first game will be on Borderlands. Then we'll play on each team's home map. And then if we get to game four, it'll be Sea of Worms. And then game five will be random so this should be fun we are ready to go at least i am you guys are find out uh, but let's uh, just get right into these games game number one borderlands so let's see let's get these recorded games up um, I, i'm pumped worked all weekend i'm ready for these games and we are looking for our ATB versus DOD game number one. Here we go on Borderlands. A lot of aggressive gods like normal. No big surprise here. Let me uh, readjust the chat box and let us go. I think we are looking at, yes, we are looking at the deities of death on the uh, right side of the map. It's Sheltie in purple. As Loki, we see him kind of shooting at these poor walrus. Um, their pocket player, Brickhead, is Odin. And then Skady makes a return. I know he'd been away for a little bit. Well, he's back. And he's a Rano. So we've got Loki, Odin, Ranos, and let's look on the left side. We're looking at ATB. We've got Mr. Boat. He is a Odin as well. We saw him use Great Hunt to get another Walrus and more cows. Their middle player is Mariano. He is Loki. I'm not sure if I've ever seen him play Loki. Usually he plays Serranos, I think. But And then Raha Kanarawa Loki. Now, I have not seen this guy play Loki before. He's typically a Ra player and has a pretty good team game Ra. Um, so it be interesting to see how he does as a Loki. So there we are, there's the players, and let's take a look at the map, it's Borderlands, it's a newer map, it's got a lot of hunt, um, players start really close together, um, though there are these trees that kind of divide them, in the middle is just this little mosh pit of giraffes and gold mines, um, wide open, um, if you remember from when F2 played UCA, it was a pretty crazy game, just raids everywhere, pretty, I, I like this map, in team games it's really fun, uh, really fun to watch, um, but yeah, a lot of hunt, which always spawns in the back, and then you kind of got these little back entrances back here, um, so we'll see how it goes, naturally it's an aggressive map, which is why we see all of these aggressive guys, uh oh, idle, there we go, not too bad. But every second counts. But looking at the players, you're probably going to know a lot of these DOD players because they're all pretty good. Um, ATB, they primarily actually play on the Extended Edition. They do play on Boobly a decent amount. Um, but ATB, at least 1v1 skill, are clearly... Ooh. <laughs> clearly in 1v1, they aren't as good. Um, but... Uh, we could see them building forward here. They're going to be doing a triple rush on Scotty. Now, the problem that I can see with this is that they built their temple a little too far forward because it is in a line of sight. So 
This is going to tell DOD exactly what's going on because they're seeing the Teal player building here and Teal is not this player. So they know that um, there at least is going to be a double over here. And you might as well assume a triple with three Norse. You could see triple Undermine because Undermine does like 800 damage to a town center approximately. So three Undermines will actually finish off Scotty's town center. Um, and I was going to mention, we're already into it. Um, we can see is that one thing that I think that ATB has done really well and why they've been so successful, they have had a lot of planning going into games with a lot of good teamwork. And we can see that the uh, DoD players are uh, building here to help defend. Um, but the uh, question is, will they be able to help out? Yes, we are seeing three Heimdalls. So we're going to see triple undermine here. Uh, clearly, ATB is ready for this. We do see the... Uh, the Ravens flying over, um, but I don't know if, I mean, line of sight is great, but you know what's coming now, and they're all aging up at pretty much the same time, almost right at four minutes, which is pretty quick. Um, it's faster than the DoD players, and oh, Skadey is really, this is a 430 advance. If they actually cast their undermines right away, they might kill the town center before he even ages up. There's two. Now, where's the third one? Let's get the third one. There's the third one. And if they kill it before it's up, it's almost game over right away. Because it's gonna... It insta-kills, almost, with all three. And, oh, if they would have gotten all their units up here... Like, ahead of time, they would have killed it before it aged up, I think. Oh, it was... They could have. If they wouldn't have gotten distracted by this silly tower here, uh, but okay, all right, a lot of a lot of repairing going on here. I think eventually the town center will go down. We now have the reinforcements coming in from from Shelty here, but the town center is down. And let's take a look real quick what Scotty's got. He has no gold, so he can't make he can't make units. And he he, he upgraded his towers here, but this is maybe something. God, maybe should have thought of when they were seeing triple Norse and that you could have you could see this triple undermine coming in but then it was blind pit going into the game but in game you might want to worry about this but uh this could be a very quick game over because if you can see Scotty has no resources it's basically a 2v3 and Brickhead and Shelties really don't have that great of an army and I mean it's 2v3 so what are they gonna do uh... <laughs> I thought that maybe strat wouldn't work because they built in line of sight, but clearly it didn't matter. Um, and it really was the slower advances by uh, DoD that has caused this. We can see a villager getting trapped here. She will be slaughtered. We got a couple sneaking over. One is almost dead. Two hit points. Uh, but I don't know if it really matters. God. Now they're, they are defending the rush for now. They are defending. So, but we got this one. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. these two villagers are almost dead. So the question is, though, this is where the dangerous part comes in. Is because they're aging up faster. Oh, triple houses killed by this forest fire. That's huge. And then another house dead. Is they're going all in on a fast advance, which means they don't have much behind it. So the question is. With all the resources they spend in on aging up quickly, can they counter and come back and fight? And we've got not a lot of army we can see from ATB. Really, it's only Mariano that has army. I think ATB maybe lost just a few too many units kind of randomly chasing after the villagers, which they didn't quite kill. Not all of them. There's still one back here. This this. Raven will find it. Oh no! The Raven stopped just in time, but we can see that ATB is now getting pushed off of their their forward base. And they lost a lot of units coming in. Oh! Got him! They don't have line of sight of that gold mine. I mean, even if they... Ooh, they can fall back and lose their base, though, because it is essentially a 2v3 and will be for a while. There's just a few few units for Scotty, but not many. 
Um, he's going to be stuck at zero town centers for a while. Um, and his... Really, these should probably be defending, maybe? So they are forcing DoD to fall back and help defend. But now we've got Raha Kanar with a little bit of rough shape. And this is, I guess like I said, we were a little surprised to see them Raha Kanara going Odin or Norse when he normally does it. And I can see they had their special strategy. But we got a little bit of raiding here. So because Shelty went up with Heimdall later on with the Hall of Thanes, his army will be quite a bit more effective than the other Norse players, but um, oh, he should fight this. Mariano should maybe fight it. Oh, yeah, here comes his iron jar. As long as we can get them to start blowing their horn, I think Mariano would win this, but no, he's falling back. He needs to get some reinforcements, but the only reinforcements here are all Scotty. Or not Scotty, all Brickhead. And where is Green's army? Back here. Ooh, this is not a good fight, actually. Green is way back here fighting, and now we have Mariano just lost all of his units here. Um, fighting you just a little bit out of position. And that was not a good trade for him. Just out of position, and now there's not a lot of heroes. We've got four Valkyries. No, no, some of them are Mariano. It's so confusing, they're all Norse. Um, we got a couple of Valkyries here for Shelty. And you can see it's a lot of throwing Axemen here. And not much behind it. Scotty's got his former Milo. Nice shockwave here. That's gonna kill a lot of Axemen. Ooh, we got towers upgraded. Mining on this forward gold mine could probably fall back. Ooh, uh, got some raids here. Nothing, a whole lot going on. But this is the big fight. And I think ATB maybe just suicided. Just a few too many units chasing after. Um, the units over here. Um, they didn't lose too many to the town center, but almost could have just fallen back once they killed the town center and then just had like four or five Hersiers roaming around looking for villagers. Um, Scotty's got two here, almost dead. He's only got three villagers though. So ATB just needs to solidify and they'll be okay. But DOD's doing a really good job keeping the pressure up. Um, now it's kind of the kind of the pendulum here. The early pressure gets you an early advantage. But I wonder if he's been tributed resources. Because this is a lot of units for a three vil Atlantean. Uh, but uh, the kill death ratios probably aren't very good. Yeah, 53 to 22. Rock right, Kanarwa 13 to 30. Yeah, we can see really bad kill death ratios for everybody. And really, it's Brickhead who's really done a lot of work uh, with all of his throwing axemen and that forest fire killed three houses as well and now we've got Shelty with some raiding got Hall of Thane so he can do some damage ATB is down in score but man if they could have found these two villagers here I mean one is one shot and we can see that all Scotty is doing is just pumping out Mermillo. Um, no, if we can say DoD has it yet, but they have the advantage. Clearly, really nice army from your zero town center Atlantean too. And he's only been tributed 270 resources. I mean, I guess when he doesn't have to make villagers, everything he's gathering can go straight to. Mermillo, which is why he has an army. See aggression here on the wood line. We also see aggression here. I think DoD has this. They think they do. Looks fantastic. If they, if ATB would have attacked the town center right away with all of their units, I think they could have killed that town center before before Scotty aged up because he went with a 430. And, but ATB spent a little too much time just kind of messing around by this tower. And I think they could have. But they probably didn't anticipate a 430. They were probably thinking a four minute anyway. See a wall yeah. getting built here. Got Rakanara with his curse here. He's looking for. He's definitely looking for Scotty's villagers. Uh, but. 
This Raven just missed these Vills, so they probably don't think there's any back here because they probably think that they've scouted it. Um, but uh, we can see some really good pressure still being maintained by Shelty here. He's played a really good game as the raiding, the raiding guy. I mean, look at this. There's there's no units to defend, and it's just three Hersier and two Valks, and look how much just mayhem they're causing. And it's really well done by both the Dodd players who didn't get rushed. And I think you can maybe see the Norse familiarity coming to coming to fruition here for DoD as they're playing a really good extended game. Um, here we only have two Valks left, but I mean there's not a single Hersier here to help out. We still see the pressure up over here. Shelty with a lot of myth units. Just myth units everywhere, but we got a huge throwing Axeman army. Which, if they can pick off the enemy throwing axemen, oh, 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 oh Shelty, Hersier kind of coming in. Oh, we've got Frost already, too, for Brickhead. Whew. See, DoD, their economies are so much better because they haven't been raided at all. And we even got Brickhead stealing a town center down here. I don't think there's any way out for, um, for ATB now. I mean, it looked really good to start off. Really good. We can see <laughs> the double frost giants coming out just like that. And we've got Shelty is almost up with uh, Bragi as well. Um, we saw him aging up somewhere. Or maybe he already hit. Okay, he already hit. So you could see like a, just a, four, a flaming weapons down here. And this town center will go down. Um, and then you could see like another attack over here with a frost. And um, we won't see anything. Um, but and just a reminder, no spoilers in chat for those of you showing up. Um, but whew, an exciting game. This is fun. But I mean, throwing axemen just so slow. I mean, they're just they're just out of position. I mean, even when they're kind of in position, they're still out of position because of how slow they are. Now we have a shockwave down here. Huge raid on Mr. Bode, who's not looking good. And we've got, we don't even need a frost here because there's no arm. And you've got the frost giants with their 12 crush, 18, or 12 hack, 18 crush, just mowing down this town center. And yeah, what a turn of events. Basically, kind of a 2v3 as we see that Skadia has gotten his town center back. And just a uh, nice strat. Just a little bit reckless with the vil the units, I think, after the town center went down. And then they just took, they got a lot of units picked off down here. Lost a lot of their buildings, of course. I mean, their entire forward build was destroyed, uh, which that's a lot of resources that you, they couldn't really afford to replenish. And um, yeah, Brickhead and Shelty just way ahead, particularly B Brickhead, who's really had a really nice game here. Um, but yeah, when you're killing lots of units and you don't have to make anything to defend, man, man, if they frost this, there's just so many vills that would be idle. It'd be like a fantastic frost. Uh, does it really matter? Oh, we've even got the frost giant upgrade. Frost giants of Rim. Upgrade here. Got he down to three town centers, but still did quite a bit of work with some Armillo roaming around. The power of Atlantean. I like the strategy from ATB. I think just a little bit better performed, they could have they could have pulled it off. But yeah, the game is certainly over by now, um, as we see. Mer Mr. Bo is getting pushed off of his only town center, um, and I expect we'll probably see the GGs coming in pretty soon. Because I mean, we have Scotty who's almost in a better position than. Um, the, all the ATVs now anyway, so it's, yeah, it's uh, complete and utter a decimation at this point. ATB not wanting to resign because it means it would be their very first loss of the season. Hey, they killed this town center. Look at them go. Ariano is going to try to get it back. We have flaming weapons used here just to get in on all the throwing axemen. Kind of really didn't need to use that flaming weapons really but um we'll do it anyway and that's gonna be the end of mr boat's entire army we have <laughs> we have the old nimble winner being used and there are the resignations and that is it gg a fun game a cool strategy i think it would work just a little reckless
I think. I think they probably, when they got that town center down so easily, were thinking it was going to be smooth sailing. But then they kind of got all their armies picked off, and they were losing units one at a time, losing armies one at a time. And you can kind of see that by the kill-loss ratio, where you got Mariano 18 to 51, Mr. Boat 55 to 88, uh, Canaro 30 to 60. I mean, all pretty bad kill-loss ratios. Um and it's just keep on getting units picked off over and over and over. And then this is that big fight where Mariano started fighting before everybody else was there. And then they just lost all their units. And then they're having to spend so many more resources um, to replenish. And we can see that they're ahead in resources, being ATB. But because they're losing so many units, they're behind in everything else. Uh, but that was, that was a cool game. That was a fun game. And Deities of Death. Won the uh, first game here. And we are going to move on now to game number two, which is going to be ATB's home map, um, seeing as they lost. So we'll see what kind of trickery ATB has going for them. So they lose their first game of the season. Will they lose two in a row? I think, they'll, I think they're pretty legit on their home map. I think they'll have a good strategy on their home map. I forgot to say my prediction going into this. I predict that... My prediction was that DoD would win. I think they'll win 3-2. to two. But I think ATB will win their home map. And I think ATB will be able to pick up one more win in the other three games. But I think DoD's just overall skill will just be a little bit too much for ATB to overcome. But we'll see because ATB has been good so far. So game number two. I want to see what ATB has got in store. It's going to be a crazy map, I think. Game number two, Kronos, Kronos, Gaia, Rano, Serranos on Vinland Saga. Okay, okay. All right, I love this map. It's fantastic. So who are we looking at down on the bottom? We are looking at Raha Kanarwa is blue and he's Kronos. We've got Mariano as a Gaia, and then a, another Kronos here. So no Oranos. No Oranos here. Remember, player, no spoilers, my big man. Don't know any of the uh, games, um, but no, no Oranos. So ATB doesn't know where any of the town centers are on the mainland, but they'll find them pretty quick anyway. Um, meanwhile, the other... The other players here, let's take a look at DOD. We've got Sheltie in the purple, he's a Ranos. We've got Fox is a Ranos, and then Scotty is a ooh, triple a Ranos. I don't like that. I don't like that. I don't think triple a Ranos is the way to go here. Um, what triple a Ranos does give you, though, is you get the better military on land because of that 10% um, speed bonus which is gigantic but they're going to be facing a bunch of deconstructs as we can see the first one is used on Sheltie before he even gets a fishing boat out and he's going to get another deconstruct before his next fishing boat comes out no that was already the second one never mind I missed the first one so this is the second deconstruct but we can see zero fishing boats out and we've already got two for flame um, yeah, I think that the Kronos players plus the guy will be able to advance faster, which is going to give them the advantage that's more important than the speed advantage. Because if you can't mass an army where it starts, the speed starts becoming important, then the advantage is really meaningless. Because ATB gets the immediate advantage to Kronos, they can time shift their buildings, they'll have better oracles. With the um, Gaia Forest, they'll have more trees on their base, because as we can see, there's almost no trees um, at all. Um, so I think that Kronos, Kronos Gaia is just going into it the better god choice here. Um, kind of surprised to see Triple Aranos. Like, a Gaia is super valuable here. Um, so with the Kronos, Kronos Gaia, this is kind of an all-in early aggression. So this might be a short game. Because if the Kronos Kronos guy doesn't work, doesn't get that early edge, then they'll fall behind late, or will fall behind pretty quickly because of the worse army overall. ATB Flame is Keen Flame. Yes, you are correct. He's kind of the ATB guest player um, for the season, and really he's played pretty well um, so far, as has all of the ATB, really. 
going into it, I thought that they'd be like a third place team competing for playoffs, and here they were, 14 and zero. That was really good. So let's take a take a look. What kind of no texts, nobody aging up yet. Let's see what kind of economy we're at. We can see Sheltie, Scotty are way behind in food amounts. Um, than ATB. Well, you can see ATB are about ready to age up and all of DOD is way behind. So we're gonna see faster age ups, about four, yeah, all of these guys are gonna be aging up about 410. Pretty much all the same. Uh, meanwhile, we're probably gonna be seeing like 430-ish, a little bit slower. Yeah, Sheltie's gonna be way behind and he's out of berries. Sheltie's gonna, because of that double deconstruct, he doesn't have the fish, the food to age up, so he's gonna be Pretty slow to age up here. Look, he yeah, he's gonna be at like five minutes. Um, that's gonna that's gonna be way too slow. I think that they're going to immediately lose water and not be able to get on land. I think it's gonna be a quick game. A quick game here. I just I, yeah, the triple Aranos just gets the double Chronos because yeah, this is a five minute advance that is too slow. And Fox, how is Fox doing? He's up about 420-ish. And Scotty is up about 440. So yeah, they're all gonna be behind. And we can see that Fox is trying to send four, but we have had all three ATB is aged up now. They're already building buildings on the mainland. Um, they're probably the Gaia player will probably be making boats. Yeah, typically you'd have your Gaia player make boats. They might have their front Kronos player make boats too, maybe, depending. Um, but yeah, it looks like actually all the both Kronos players are just going for your pure aggression. And we can see Fox is coming way up here to um, try to land, but uh, ooh, they just just the slower advances. They're just so behind in economy already, and uh, or, and even military. Uh, we can see Fox is making units. I think we might see Flame transitioning to a little bit of warships, potentially. And oh, they've already spotted out. So they spotted out the um, the build already. And just the the sheer number of army difference is going to be huge already. And we've got a Valor for Fox. We have the upgraded. Oh, we don't have the upgrade. Get your Chronos upgrade. And a big fight here. We've got the. Carnivora tanking damage. We've got a nice little boat fight here. We got the Caladria healing. That's nice. Um, try to fall that back. And we can see that, uh, yeah, their uh, DoD is getting pushed off of water. <laughs> These whole sharks have followed all the way up here. I uh, got a few boats from Scotty. He needs to help defend this. But and Sheltie's up here too. So this is going to be the big, the big point of the game here. Um, can DoD hold this position? Um, that's the question of the game. We can see that Sheltie is pushed off of water pretty much completely. He has just a couple boats kind of roaming around in between this fight here. Carnivore's already got one dock done. And we'll probably insta-kill this boat as soon as it's done. It's kind of its reward against the insta-kill a boat when it's done. And now I just want to see an insta-kill. Alright, there it is. And now let's get the fight up here. It is a 2v3 in a way, because the Gaia has no army here, so Beauty is holding for now, but they're losing their fish economy. I would like to see the Gaia send a villager up pretty quick. Here it is. Just build on land now. Um, but I think Shelty's economy is basically non-existent, and as we can see, he really has no army here. This is his first military building. So ATB, they are just fall back, fell back for now to get the military advantage, just to make sure that they'll have everything all up and get their big army up so that they aren't losing one at a time, kind of how the first game went. And now they have the military edge here. We can see quite a bit bigger of an army. And I think as soon as they push this... They should be able to. We've also got a couple more deconstruct. Nope. Yeah, deconstruct used, I think, on a dock somewhere. Uh, but uh, yeah, DoD is completely pushed off of water. And they have the bigger land army anyway, because it's really, it actually is a 2v2, because Sheltie has no army here. And we can see the army difference. ATB is quite a bit larger. 
get your Atlantean. All, all you ever want from an Atlantean lover is right here. You can get all your big Atlantean units just shooting at each other. And it's quite the uh, choke point here. But um, you got <laughs> a bunch of citizens trying to take damage, but there's just no army behind it for DoD. I think this is going to be a quick game. Got a shockwave. We probably do have two more. Nope, nope, they're still on cooldown. So there's your shockwave, but there's just no reinforcements coming for DoD. We can see they really have no economy. Ariana has a huge economy. As does Rahakanara. I got some nice eco as well. Uh, but yeah, here comes. Yeah, we can hear the sound, the beautiful sound of Atlantean citizens dying. Um, yeah, DoD is holding a little bit, but I mean, there's so many idle villagers here. They have no economy, so it's it's pretty much over. There's there's just no there's no reinforcements. So this is ATP's map. I thought they'd maybe throw out something a little bit more wild than Vinland. We've seen a lot of Vinland this season, um, but they've, they've ATP's picked Vinland a few times and played well. Uh, but I think just a triple Aranos just isn't the right god choice here. We see this army fight kind of continuing to slowly slowly continue on fish is completely non-existent these citizens are all trying to get to the mainland but the, t the boat's gone and they, they they're stuck and that is it gg a quick nine minute response from atb basically went how i thought it would i'm um, just looking at the gods it, I, I mean to me this was a pretty predictable result based on the god choices, so I'm kind of surprised DoD went with what they got. Um, would, have, would have thought they would have done a little bit differently, um, but it is what it is. That is the game. So the series is quickly knotted up with a nine minute response from ATB. Look at the kill death ratio, a lot of fishing ships getting killed, so it looks nice for them. Economically, we can kind of compare eco and we can see DoD was about equal going into the mid game, which mid game, your mid game, I guess. In this game, is five minutes, um, but it's just it's just the slower advance times here. Um, only one DoD advanced quick, and Shelty was at five minutes. So you can see where the military count just fell behind early, pushed off of land, and that's kind of it. That's the GG. So a quick game. The first game was also kind of quick. So I don't think we'll be here all night as we move on to game number three, DoD's home map. I wonder if they, so they went with Acropolis in the first drop. Player mentioned Acropolis in the uh, chat there. So I wonder if we're going to see Acropolis, which is probably going to mean a lot of Egyptians. But let us see game number three. <laughs> Six. Raw on Acropolis. So if you didn't see this game last week, this is what you're gonna get. So Acropolis is kind of a, uh, it's a bit of a gimmicky map. People start with extra resources. I think you get like an extra 200, 250 food, an extra, some extra wood, some extra gold um, to start things off. So it's a bit of a faster paced game. Uh, but it's also, in a way, also super defensive because everybody starts on these little mountain cliffs here. You get a large gold mine in your base. You get a town center in your base. Your third town center is usually just right outside of your base, which we can see that here. Nothing's forward. Um, it's a map. Is it a good map? I mean, it's different. Um, typically what we've seen here is DoD will just do like triple fast heroic Two town center, ta, fast, heroic. Um, but what I could see working here is for someone to rush two monuments and have an ally go ta and then shift scarabs. So you do a bast segment for one of your raw players that goes an early two monument build and then get shifted into the opponent at like be with just one town center you don't get a second one as your bass player you get one town center and you should be able to get two two um 
maybe even three, depending on how fast you can get your monuments up. Maybe three scarabs by like the 8.30 mark. And I don't I think you could, I think it could work. Because you would have a locust from your allies that you could, depending on when you wanted to use Eclipse, it would kind of take some work getting your god powers lined up. Hmm. I think it could work, though, if you have one guy go best segment, but nobody's rushing a second monument. So I don't think we'll see that. We might just see six Ta builds um, with two town center. Um, it's kind of hard to say what's the most efficient here in this map because of the extra food. I would think that you'd want to advance up to age two a little bit faster than normal, like maybe like a 415 age up because I think you could afford to get a second town center and have no idle town center time um, and still get your Shadif upgrade and plow and hopefully a husbandry because they all get goats too. I mean this is of all maps this is like the perfect raw map I mean <laughs> which is why they're going raw because how do you pressure you can't. The other the other early raw weakness is getting a second gold mine. Well, you got six thousand gold in your bank, and then you've got bad gold, so you can't you can't push that. You can't push the second town center, so it's a perfect raw map. But you can do some shenanigans with early shifts and all that nonsense. Um, you necessarily don't even need to go bast either. Like you could just have one player build five siege towers, while the other ones come in with. Um, heroic units and then attack at like maybe 10 30 so you shift a bunch of siege and then everybody else sends in all their migdal units and then with triple locust there's no way to defend against the siege because you can just locust whatever bills are going to attack uh but we'll see we have an early rain here an archaic rain with husbandry but you, you miss out on the plow which that's a 22 percent upgrade for egyptians and if you're gonna do an early rain like this you'd probably want to get all of your raw players in on it you see mr boat got a few farms um a lot of farms here I and mean, they're kind of this one's real adventurous. I mean, if he would have placed his farms a little better, he could have just fit this one here. Um, I, don't, I don't really know if I like this. I mean, you do get a rain use that none of the other Egyptians can get on, but it's a slower advance. You're losing out on villager production from a second town center. I don't think it's worth it. Unless, unless he's going up Bast. He is. I would have liked to see this monument right away. He could have put an early monument right away. So they are going to do. I think this is what we're going to see is we are going to see a shift sands um, scarab play. But if he's going to do that, he should have built his second monument right away so that he can get three. Well, I guess he'll still get three anyway. He'll have he'll have the thirty six favor. So. Okay, I can get behind this. It's a bit of an all-in. Mr. Boat gets his second rain in. It actually is important to kind of see who gets their rains in first, because the rain benefits the player who cast it more than the other player. So we might have people like just, we got like probably four people just mashing the rain button once this rain ends to see who can get their next rain in. Um, the question is, how soon are people getting their farming upgrades? We would like to see Plow getting in right away. There's the Plow. So Fox has Plow. Sheltie has Plow. 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 He does not yet because he just aged up. Should be getting Plow. Hopefully he'll get Plow pretty soon here. He's got the resources for it. Plow is huge. Huge. Now if I'm Dodd, and I see my one opponent going up Bast, and two opponents actually. I didn't notice that Mr. Boat went up Bast as well. Uh, Mr. Boat could have gotten more farms out earlier, maybe, if he's going up Bast. But if I'm seeing Bast, I'm, I'm especially from two, you have to expect the Shifting Sand Scarab push. It's going to happen. 
Um, you could almost do it twice on the same player, just to slow the first guy down. You, you shift... Well, no, you only got one shifting sands. Will it work? I think if it's just... If it comes in early enough, like if we're seeing a 738 minute shifting sands scare a push, I think it I think it will work and will push off one player and will slow the other the player down pretty heavily. Um, whoa, where's Joe's plow? That's not good. There's no reason he should not have plow. No reason at all. Also, you should be empowering your town center with your pharaoh during rain. That's going to get you the, I mean, mathematically, you're getting the most resources dropped off by your rain villagers, so your pharaoh should be empowering your town centers. But no plow for Joe. That's big. That costs a ton of food. Because uh, plow is 22% gather rate, additionally. Um, that's a couple hundred food per rain. Here comes Fox's rain. So we still got Shelty and Raha Kanarwa. The problem is, though, we could potentially see rain extending until the 8-minute mark, if not later, 8.30. So, because they are going to want to try to... ATV is going to want to try to shift by 9 minutes, for sure. And we can see Shelty is aging up. The question is, where do they shift to? It really doesn't matter, I guess. You'd want to hit a flank. Uh, there's not a wall, there's not, there's a hole here. There's not completely walled off at all. I would wall off as DOD because you know what's coming. It's going to be a Shifting Sands push out of your town center somewhere. And yeah, Shifting Sands plus Eclipse means you're not going to be able to counter shift. Don't know why he's building a forward Migdal. You might as well just put it here. And then you can shift everything at once. Because now he's got to send his scarabs forward as well. We'd like to see one more scarab coming from Mr. Boat. Yep, there's three scarabs is perfect. Here's the third one. Now, are they going to push different? They should focus all in one player. I think if you try to mix it up. Oh, Shelty's going to stop their push, though. If this rain is going to last until nine minutes. That's the bad part. And this, I like this. You, you want to stay in your base because you know the aggression is going to come somewhere. So you don't want to build out somewhere and get caught out. But not, you should not be making an elephant. You want to just make... You got your building killing here. Your building killing and your tanks are your scarabs. You need damage behind it. So you need chariots or camels behind it. And we're going to see that DoD is going to get their first line of sight of what the enemy is doing right now. They have the Scare flying over here. Doesn't really tell them who's getting attacked, though. Because the push could be coming either here or their pocket. Um, we'll probably see an Eclipse next. We're going to... Wait, there has to be a shift. You have to be doing a Shifting Sands Eclipse. Yeah, I think it's going to come on... Oh... That, 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 okay, th this Eclipse is not... I don't like this. They should have shifted first and then cast the Eclipse. Because now this army... If this army is down here, this is destroyed completely. But he used Eclipse and now this army is basically useless. Like, it's doing nothing. So this Eclipse was a mistake here. I mean, not a mistake as far as it was bad. I mean, it'll still give some pressure. But if he Eclipses after this army is shifted, I think Shelty goes down. Now the question is, will Shelty go down after? Because we're probably going to see a Locust being used here. And then we're going to see another shift with another Eclipse. So maybe it's not... Maybe it's not bad, but they could have they could have done this a little bit better. Uh, Purple is also really defensive. He's, he's sending units down here now. We've got, okay, all these units have, have come down. This town center will go down. We should see the next shift here. Locust this. Oh. I don't think this is the right way thing to do. You don't split your attack. You need to you need to do it all in one. Because they've defended this now. 
because here's the thing with two of your with you two of your players being Dodd has gone up to town center as opposed to two of the players on ATB have only gone one town center so all the Dodd players overall are ahead in economy which means your your way to win this game as ETB, ATB is to do an all-in on one player. You can't split it up. And a nice building block here, um, too, as well. This is going to slow the Scarabs down quite a bit because they don't get any attack bonus versus partially built buildings. That's just their, their base attack, so it takes them a little bit longer to get through. Because now that this is defended, it, DOD can go all the way up here. This this is completely different if they shifted down here and did everything all on one player. The split army here does not work. This, this isn't going to work because they've defended this. They're really green. I mean, look at all this idle too. Like ATV just seems a little bit lost. I mean, you got to know that all this defense is coming and everybody's going to flock up here for DOD. And if they defend this attack, which losing a town center doesn't matter, they're ahead anyway. So yeah, this is going really well for DoD. We've got a few locusts that can be used. We've got a locust by Joe used to get the expensive farms down. Not a, not a great locust, but it served its purpose. So yeah, town center down, but a yeah, big deal. I mean, he's got two anyway. Killing a town center just means it's equal. So yeah, I think this strategy just isn't good as far as the mixing. You, you got to attack the same same player because yeah, DoD defended this, just losing a town center, no big deal. DoD defended this, losing a town center, no big deal. I think it would be pretty obvious that they'd be able to defend because they're ahead in economy. So oh, these this, these chariots here by Raha Kanaro aren't, aren't in a good spot. We got another locust here on the other. Expensive farms for Mariano, um, and I—I I mean, it is Ra v Ra, v Ra v Ra v Ra. So we can see this game kind of like stag stagnate for a while, which could get ATB back in the game. But I think economically, they're just—I don't have the. Economically, I think they're going to be too far behind. Uh, but they still do have map control, courtesy of the early aggression. Rakanaro does have a nice economy. He's got three town centers. He's going to reuse Tornado here. I feel like Joe is behind where he should be. Because he hasn't got attacked at all. And he's... He's actually really about the same level of score as his allies. And we see more farms getting destroyed here. Focused on Skin of the Rhino Bills doesn't do a ton of damage. But okay, so now this push is repelled. Six Ra. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Can't get enough. Um, but we've got three, six, eight town centers, and then seven, four ATB currently. Looks like we've now almost got all nine taken for. Or did they just not scout town center or what? Am I missing a town center? What's going on? I'll come find. Oh, he's lost his town center. Della. That's why he's only at two. I need pierce armor as a raw in a raw. Or you want to get pierce armor first, pretty quickly. Um, but I think now is when we're going to start seeing the counter pushing, because the tornado kind of bought some time. Ford ATB slowed down uh, Fox. But we're going to see them falling behind, them being ATB, falling behind an economy. You can see that both Mr. Boat and Mariano are still stuck on two town centers. Though we do have Mr. Boat now grabbing his third. I got some nice trade route for Fox. Nice trade route for Ra Kanarwa. But I think overall as time goes on, if the DOD Ra is having just a little bit better economy they're gonna be able to push through but as I said Egyptian is really good at delaying games you know, these guys they're trying to be down here but they can 90 degree trade route. they are aren't they look at this they come down this way and then for whatever reason they're like switching over here that's I don't know why 
Oh, it's because he's trading with this town center. Well, he can fix it once this town center goes up. But yeah, he's kind of got to circle around in here and then come all the way back around. So it's a bit inefficient. This this trade route too is uh, maybe this is what you're talking about. But I don't understand this one either. Um, maybe these town centers weren't built yet when he started, but definitely should be retasking his trade route here um, to get it down on this one. Um, what kind of eco upgrades are we looking at? Eh, pretty decent from Foxy. Uh, not so good for Joe. Sheltie is pretty good as well. Decent. Decent. Actually, Joe is kind of behind economically here, which is a little bit surprising. Again, Joe is the one who wasn't hit yet. And he really isn't ahead at all in score. Rock and Arrow's got a nice score. He's... Rock and Arrow's got a really nice team game raw. Um, really, really good. So... The early aggression, man. If ATB would have done better with their aggression, I, I think they'd be substantially ahead right now. It's double, triple, triple a player would have been good. But there's not in a bad spot. Rock and Aro has kind of taken over um, the game here. He's really at a position where Joe should have been. Um, I mean, Joe is the low score on his team. Doesn't make much sense, but that's okay. People sometimes have bad games. Sometimes not as good as they could have wanted. That's all right. No big deal. No big deal. So ATB is able to delay. We've got Fox trying to forward build up here. We've got Joe is up heroic. Okay, that's why Joe. I mean, Joe is probably the only one aging maybe on his team potentially. So we've got a tornado being used on this middle base here. That's uh, just to get back map control and get the aggression going. I don't know about this. I would almost save Tornado in these in this situation now for Titan Gates. With a rock, well placed. You could throw a rock in the back and just have him sit back here. And as soon as a Titan Gate gets placed, you could insta-kill it with a Tornado. I don't really see the purpose in Tornadoing a Barracks and a Mingdol. I, I don't know. I think it's kind of suboptimal use, but that's okay. Let's take a look at everybody's economy. Rock and Arwa, not too much. Mariano's way behind. Mr. Boat's decent. Joe is good. Fox, okay. Yeah, Mariano is kind of substantially behind everybody. It's because he kind of put the most into the aggression. And it didn't work out here. These camels are really confused running through the front here like this. Need to build your markets. Oh, look at this. Oh, they spotted it. That's actually really good because sometimes this doesn't show up as an idol. So what happened here is Shelty cut a hole through this tree, leaving a one pick, you know, one spot hole here. And that was actually really good to notice that because that can pile up and not notice. And I like this too. He threw a granary here block it off. He should put a wall here because you don't want this happening and it's going to happen again. You should really wall that off. Alright. Got the battle line right across the middle. So just like last game I was getting a little confused trying to figure out who was who because everybody was the same. Civ here we're going to be confused as well because everybody's the same. Uh, Fox is up with Osiris so that is the first and only Osiris. We still do have a lot of shifting sands for sh shifting sand shenanigans. Uh, yeah, throw a wall here. Maybe. If they can delay long enough for for Mariano to rebuild his economy, but we see he's got a lot of idle villas. Doesn't have fortified town centers. He is substantially behind. And we have a tornado being used on this forward. I mean, it's just to get a little map control, I suppose, but... Oh, we saw shifting sands. Where did the shift go? Dang it, I missed it. There was a shifting sand somewhere. Oh, he shifted just a few units? I hate to see a shift like that. I think it's just to save the middle again. But it only shifted three chariots and a croc. I mean, if you're going to use your shift like that, why not shift the army down here at the beginning of the game? Oh, man. 
But yeah, DOD is just economically ahead. And they'll continue to push. I like these little walls here. I think he's hoping he can catapult this. I and mean, if he built his wall up here, they would have range. I don't know if there's quite going to be range down here, but that's what he's going for. I do like it. That's a good play. Um, we get lots of migdals, lots of units. Not enough siege from either side yet. We'd like to see some more siege. Mr. Boat's got hit his tornado. May use it defensively in here in the middle. I'm not sure. Might have to use it down here. I don't think it's going to fit, but uh, this is a great idea. I like it. And we can see we're getting the upgraded catapults. They could fit. Okay, now he's... Okay, they'll definitely fit here. So he's... See, let's see if he can finish that wall off. It'll be close. But there's really almost no way to defend this other than just to shift units in. Ah, uh, yeah, they don't quite fit. <laughs> they fit here, though. <laughs> Move, fatty! This catapult can't reach, man! Gotta move! He's launching at the monument. Alrighty, yeah, this uh, trade route, I don't know why Fox has uh, not fixed his trade route yet. But that's okay. Still substantially ahead. And without any upgrades on the town center, only 3,600 hit points for a citadel. I mean, look how fast it's going down to one catapult, not two catapults. And nice, nicely done here. If they, I mean, you gotta use a shift. Well, they don't have a shift. That's right. ATB has no shift. They have a tornado. You gotta, you have to use a tornado here. I think you have to. And I hope somehow you can get back. But I don't think, you know, no tornado. So this, this town center is gonna go down. That's big, losing your citadel. That's a 10 pop. It's just instantly instantly uh, lost for the rest of the game um, and in the middle still not a whole lot going on I really think this is the, the push here um, hmm. I'll keep the catapult in here to keep the town center. Oh, here comes the rock so he's gonna fly up and uh, should have kept the catapult here to uh, keep the town center on it's gonna go back up Fox should kind of abandon this spot you can really kind of lose ground on here for a while and it not be a problem. He should be going all in up here. And oh, he's even got Sunny Boy up here to join in. And we can see that town center then go insta back down. Uh, Son of Osiris is paused. Okay. Throw him back in. Maybe put, take him up here. And then should start funneling the um, Migdol units up. Fox really doesn't have a lot of pop room because of his bad trade route, I think. Um, but nowhere is winning for ATB. I think that's going to be over soon. Shifting Sands has been used. Okay, yep. Shifting Sands to move a bunch of villies up here. That's good. Should almost just shift. Get an entire army. I mean, losing this point doesn't matter. Just shift an entire army. Like, shift all this, too. Might as well just go for the kill. Shift it all up here. Yeah, you've got... Yeah, actually, you got Osiris. What do you know? Oh, here comes the tornado. Kills... That's a nice tornado. It's gonna kill the Migdal, and here comes Red to help out a little bit. Really nice tornado, actually. Because now the son of Osiris is stuck. That was a... <laughs> he waited to use tornado and did lose his citadel, but now Sonny... Oh, he shifts it out of there! <laughs> Son of Osiris just zoops to safety. Where did he get his zooped off to? Down here. All right. All righty, all right. I like it. Eh, kind of. You might as well just lose your son of Osiris at that point. Um, but rebuild the wall here. You're good to go and get this town center back down. ATB, uh, Rana Canaro, bringing up the score, is holding. They missed their opportunity, though, did Sheltie. The, the triples are so big. Or doubles. You can get on here. Because he, here's what I'm talking about. Ra can defend Ra for a long time. This fight here is kind of meaningless. It's probably going to go on for 5-10 minutes before even if somebody has an advantage it's really going to move anywhere. So what you do, you have a really strong advantage here. So... Just give up on this spot, because who really cares if you get pushed back to here? It doesn't really matter. you got a few minutes to play with. 
So if they were to just stop fighting here, just shift the entire army up here, or not even shift, just stop building an army, and just go to where you have the advantage, you can win so much faster. As it is, I think Dodd will eventually push through, because Mariano is still so far behind. Um, but those are the kind of the things that I don't think a lot of players generally think about. Um, is that they get you get a lot of tunnel vision where you just keep pushing the same spot over and over and over and just kind of stagnates and do a long game where if you like were just a reverse spot you could like instantly get an advantage like for example down here take a look at how open this is this is wide open for dod to come through and yes they have the advantage here they're slowly pushing but he could just delay here throw up like four towers just delay and then just come through here and push and now he's like instantly without fighting is in a much better position um, and now he's here okay there it is this is what i was wanting to see you've got the huge advantage here the middle fight doesn't matter at all now we've got the shift up here this is what i wanted to see maybe they're waiting for the first tornado to get down but now there's mario has no way to counter this it's, it's done now he's instantly done because now what has to happen is Raha Kanaro has to move his army all the way up here to defend. Which it takes time to get up here. So it's over. Yeah, just like that, you switch the battlefront, and now it's over. You got to get the Son of Osiris empowering here. That's okay. What army composition would I use here? As it gets more and more late game, you kind of want to have fewer and fewer military units and more and more buildings and just siege. Um, because units kind of counteract each other and it just kind of stalemates but how you push through late game in Egyptian is buildings and siege because towers are essentially free units they cost no pop and then you just kind of push forward with your towers as you first you're fighting here you got your line of towers you want to get up here and then you delete these towers and then you're up here so I mean you still have a few units here I like the camels here kind of roaming around um, I mean you can't go wrong with camels chariots uh, you can't though and you don't have any armory upgrades other than the pierce um, but um that's what you do and yet so now now this is it now ATB's done just like this just maybe DoD was listening to me they, they're somehow channeling me from the future while they were playing these games um, but uh, so they, they got it it's a little bit slower than what it could have been um, but like AT Raha Kanara is great. He's pushing through the middle now. He's winning the middle. Yeah, big deal. What does it matter? There's nothing of value here. Like, I can't believe he's actually just ignoring this. Need to get a little more siege here. Like, these chariots are just wasted pop at this point. You just need towers and siege. Might as well just delete the chariots. They're really doing nothing. Delete the chariots. You got a couple catapults down there. Um... But yeah, just chariots and catapults. That's all you need. And well, we got the two catapults here, plugging away. And then there's no way they can defend this. And Raha Kanaro, I think he's trying to go for the counter push. And we've got a rain has been used to block the Titan from going up for DOD. No push on the side, though. So they're trying to get Titans up without DOD getting a Titan and hoping that that'll save the day. But. It's too late. Ariano is basically dead. This town center is going to go up. And then once they get to this town center, the, t the trade route's done. And we'd like to see. We need siege. See, he's trying to get siege out, but he's popped. He's losing a house. He's losing some houses here, which is a bit annoying. But, um, but yeah. Yes, Shelty, you're right. They, you're right. I, I was, Shelty and Mr. Voter just kind of pointlessly attacking here forever. Uh, I mean, Shelty got the slow advantage. He's able to push through eventually. Um, and, you know, once you get here, now you're in a great spot. But it just took so long to get there. Though probably the only reason he did push through was because of Mr. Boat putting a lot of resources to the Titan. So the Titan will kind of get this back. But... It's over up here. I mean, once you get some catapults under these towers, there's no way that Mariano can hold up here. 
and Mr. Boat with the pressure here, but you, you look, he got all the way up here, and now it's as soon as the waves of mercs come in, this pressure is done. Um, where does he go with this Titan? Yeah, they can they can go with um, Conquest though if they pick Conquest. But yeah, I I think a one a wonder here along with some well positioned um, heroes would do well here. But I think some early team aggression. Like ATV I think could win this with what they did. Just the attacks were wrong. If Mariano gets shifted and attacks here at the bottom at the beginning, I think Hey! Hey, hey watch what you say about forgetting to put conquest, my big big man there. <laughs> Uh, watch what you say, watch what you say. Because I forgot to do Conquest. Oh, look at this red here. He is uh, going all in on these, uh, this Migdol. Okay. Trying to push back here, but, uh, let's see, you got your towers. But where's the Titan? See, this Titan, sending it all the way up here, now he's stuck. Like, this, until he gets up here, it's 20 pop. No, this is not the final, this is the semi-final. This is the semi-final, currently 1-1, one one, but DoD is um, winning this game for sure. Um, actually, kind of surprised the push here is ending for now. Oh, this is why. Fox is putting too much down here. Again, why? This entire fight here is meaningless. It doesn't matter. So... They'll get pushed off of this town center, it looks like. We see waves of mercenaries. I hate mercenaries, they're so bad. Um, hmm. It's weird that Fox opted to start pushing down here again. Really strange. Because they're gonna lose this up here. We have this Titan cleaning up the middle. Just to kind of save Mr. Bo. Oh, the wonder! We do have a wonder from Mr. Boat. Uh, I don't know why you would put it there, though. I think the better spot to do it is... <laughs> We've got four wonders going up at the same time. Oh, this is a better spot to put the wonder. Oh, we got a wonder here. We got a wonder there. We got wonders all over the place. I wonder who is going to get their wonder up first. It looks like Fox will. Because he's really cramming a whole lot of billies on here. Fox, yeah, there's not a whole... There's not even a power mid on this. So, kind of the last-ditch wonder efforts here. Oh, here comes Fox with his army. But he lost all his units. He lost all his top centers. But uh, no big deal. No big deal. Joe's Titan's coming forward. We're going to see a bit of a Titan battle here. Do we have any god powers left? Nope. All the god powers are used up. We got this catapult thinking he's helping out shooting at him. But yeah, this one is coming up way faster than everybody else's. And they only have one player on ATB who has rocks as well, so that's a little bit important. So the Titans are, well, I guess Mr. Boat is going to run. Okay, you got to fight. You got to fight, Mr. Boat. Oh, why aren't you just fighting? Uh, I think he's wanting to fight under his units. Oh, he's stuck. And yeah, I've got to turn and fight here. So that's going to end up with Joe with a little bit more hit points. Joe's Titan will probably end up with enough hit points to come up here and push through, I think. Um, but yeah, Fox's Wonder is up easily in time. Oh, ho, Joe's just a second behind. Oh, man. And now you got a Titan Gate for Shelty. Um, ATV just delaying. But it's over. The scores are actually pretty close. I'm guessing. We have rock and <laughs> 16,000 gold. Jeez, he's going for omniscience. Oh, man. Uh, but yeah, delete this uh, barracks here. So I can't fit through. Big fatty. Well, this Titan has allowed this to solidify here, but. Uh... Oh, where are you going? Push through here. DOD has kind of lost their way a little bit at this point. Like, it's kind of... It's easy to get in that position where you get into these late-game wars where it's... 
you're kind of doing a lot and not a lot is happening and you kind of just start doing kind of nothing and you just start like funneling units randomly to different positions. Like why they ever stop their full all-out aggression up here, I really have no idea. Uh, like I also, like why they uh, uh, are grabbing that town center. They really don't know why. But like at this point, all Dot is just focused on is just winning with wonders. And um, it's going to be hard for ATV to take down these wonders because they only have one player with Rock. And that's Rock and Arwa. And it's going to be hard to sneak Rocks over here. Um, maybe we can see DoD is putting up lighthouses. So they're going to have line of sight pretty much the entire map. Theoretically, they could maybe not get line of sight, you know, I'll have line of sight of a rock, but not, like, notice it. Again, there's there's nothing. This bottom half of the map, just wide open for anybody. Yeah, still, I mean, like, Shelty could just build all the way up here, build three workshops, throw a uh, wall in here and, like, four towers, and then he's pushing through here. Um, but let's fight in the middle, why not? Here's a rock with 10 catapults. All right, all right, he's just gonna rock drop. Rock and Arwa. I mean, these catapults are nice and everything, but this is, t we're at 10 catapults here. Cat this is 40 population. So until both these town centers go down, Shelty's actually behind as far as pop. And there's the resign just like that. So I guess the rock drop, the 10 catapult rock drop broke. Rock and Arawa's back, just like that. But, um, it, <laughs> that's it. Game number two goes to DoD, so we have just one more game left. Potentially. Um, it could go to game five. It's, it's, a, it's a five game series, so it's not just one more game. But one more game left if DoD wins. But, um, just to recap this, I like the Bast here. Game three. We're moving on to game four. I like the Bast, but the split attack Bast, I don't think. This is not spoilers. I don't know who wins, man. I don't know who wins the next game. No, so I misspoke. We can see. Woohoo, down to 35 bills. Yeah, economically, Rock and Arwa way ahead. Actually, ATB is ahead in the economy, but that's only because of Rock and Arwa. What is the one view? Yes, it is the 14th. We still do have spots open, too, um, for the uh, league. Actually, let me put in a quick little um, splurge for the league here. Hold on one second. Let me get to my overlay. I'll show you guys my beautiful spate, my beautiful face. So the 1v1 league is starting soon. Um, it's planning on starting in a week. So it's um, intermediate to generally designed for intermediates and experts, um, but uh, we're gonna we're looking for 32 players. We're at about 23, 24 right now, so there still is some room. Um, so that's the Discord link for the 1v1 league that me and um, Boyt are hosting. Uh, primarily Boyt, but I'm helping him out. Who made Blue Lagoon? That was Rubble is Rising and made it. Um, a blue lagoon the map script um, but that's game number three let's go back and take a look at the uh, post game here real quick yeah post game let us take a look here oh my the recorded games so post game economically we can see that ATB was a little bit behind early because of only the one town center grabs the bast military though about equal, but I think with some better usages of their early god powers, I think ATB could have ended out that early game with a pretty decent advantage. Uh, but I think just a little bit of misplay. But that's all right. It happens. No big deal. You see Rahakanaro quite a bit ahead. You got two TC versus three. Well, the E. The EE script is different than the Voobly script, uh, so there might be some issues on it. I'm not as familiar with the Blue Lagoon one on EE. I think that was edited later on by Haggard, maybe. Uh, but you're not going to get that on Voobly. But you might get it on EE. I mean, sometimes in rare occurrences it can happen. Um, if you have the recorded game, 
I don't know if you got Discord. You can give it to me on Discord, and I can send it over, and maybe they could edit it in. But anyway, we're going to move to game four, which is Sea of Worms. Oh, I don't think we'll see any Egyptian on this map. So Sea of Worms came with the game itself. It's a land water map. So Sea of Worms, ATB versus DOD. Game number four. ATB has got to win the next two. It's a best of five. Kronos, Kronos, Hades, Kronos, Kronos, Kronos. All right. That's kind of what we've been seeing on this uh, map. It's a lot of Kronos on here. Mm -mm -mm. Your favorite night streamer is doing great. Uh, Raven Girl, nice to see you. I haven't seen you in for a while. But anyway, what are we looking at? We're looking at Sea of Worms, and up on the top of the map here, we are looking at ATB. They got Flame is returned. Flame 6 9. <laughs> if he's ever even done that in his life probably not um we got mr boat in hades we've got raha kanarwa is chronos and then the very front front player there is flame also chronos bad luck to get the chronos here does that fat has got a lot walk a long way well i guess it's not that bad luck actually the odds are they would have had a chronos come up here um 66 chance i suppose i think um, but we've got uh, also triple chronos on the other side, so that makes it pretty simple. We've got Chelty here, Fox, and then Scotty is back. So Scotty sat out the previous game, and now he's back. We've got the battling deconstructions going back and forth at each other, and a villager attacking each other. So what you what you see here, the reason we're seeing a lot of chronos on this map, is because of these deconstruct shenanigans. Uh, the water is pretty important here. This isn't like Medit, where um, you can kind of delay because it's so small as far as the sides. Um, it's pretty wide open, and the players start really close to each other. I mean, these are the opposing players. So water is pretty important here because you lose water, you lose your eco advantage, and then you, you're probably going to be defensive pretty quick. Um, so water's big, and that's why we see the triple Kronos, which is going to lead into this triple deconstruct. I wonder how well Flame is responding to this. See, you can see he's got a lot of wood up here. I changed this map. The only thing I did was, by default, this game, this map spawns you with a fortress, and then also has like a 50% chance of an island spawning back here. Um, so I removed, for the RTS League version of this that we're using, you can't actually pick as your home map, the non, the one that has your starting palace, but for the official version, remove the palace and just made it your standard build, and then also got rid of the island because it was tended to be really strong for Egyptian, because um, nobody else could get on that island, at least early on. Um, so yeah, that was the, that was the changes I made. Um, so, Triple Kronos versus Kronos Hades. If the Hades can get a good Pestilence, I think it works. I do not want to see the Hades going a Restoration. Because if you go Restoration, you have no way to stop the enemy from building boats. And then you're going to fall behind on boat production because one of your guys, Flame, is going to be getting deconstructed all game long. And is going to have a really hard time building boats. So if you don't use a Pestilence to stop the opponent from building boats, you're going to fall behind in boat production. And when you're behind in boat production, you'd be substantially behind. Restoration really doesn't help out much. I think you need Pestilence. So... The player to watch here for me is Mr. Boat. He is going up Ares. I think that's the better play. The question is, how is Flame doing? Oh, what did I just do? Well, we sent 90 food to Flame as well. That's so Flame can advance at a decent time. I'd almost consider if I'm going to be the front player that's getting deconstructed, is to do like a 330 and only build a dock once you start aging up. Because look at this. He's got two fish. Really doesn't matter. 
you could have just gone pure eat food and then aged up like you were doing a 330 rush and then instead of course rushing build two docks then and I think that's better because he could be up at 340 and attacking I think that's what you do here if you're the front you're the front Kronos uh, Mr. Boat is the first one to age up all the deconstructs are on cooldown. Let's see how soon we got some. Narakanara's got a deconstruct soon. Flame's got one soon. Fox is up. Skating is almost ready. Yeah. All right. So now we're gonna see a bunch of craziness. We're gonna see all sorts of heroed. Oh, Flame getting his valor, his um, oracles to attack before valoring. That's that's a little bit big. Uh, but now you got the six v six going in on this dock. Only one dock for Flame. Here's the. Here's the, uh, pet. Oh, no. He missed. This is... He could have used Pestilence here and gotten all five docks. And instead he missed. And I don't know if they had line of sight of those docks. They had line of sight of that one. Yeah, if he uses Pestilence here, he gets all the docks. And getting, getting Shelty's docks don't matter. Because Shelty was slowed down anyway. These aren't the docks you want to. Oh, one of the one of the temples. I don't think the temples are important though. I think you get more value out of just stopping all of the docks, because if you win water, you can kill the Prometheans anyway. Um, as it is, we'll see how it goes. Uh, they're getting pushed back a little bit. Now we're going to see all the uh, docks, so now that the Pestilence is done. Now we see the two Deconstructs after Pestilence. That's nice, that's nice. Um, but now we're going to see how the fighting is going to go here. So it is 2v3. No, no, we got Flame with a decent water too. We got the Greek... Oh, gotta watch out your boats. Oh, way too far forward. Oh, and then we just got, you know, this this fight here. Just a bunch of Oracles and Prometheans just swinging at each other big fight is the boat battle we got oh mr. boat a little bit off on his micro um, the battle is a little bit even so far uh, but mr. boat is a little bit behind on boats um, but they are Greek boats so they're better but again they're losing a few too many boats and now okay 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 they are got the land advantage but I don't think the land advantage matters it's all about the, the water We'll see. Real quick here. What are we looking at? Deconstruct is being used now. How many deconstructs we got? So we've got two deconstructs used on the docks. That's going to temporarily give ATB. Did I? Uh... I think it, I think DOD has it. I think they've got it. No, they aren't going to fight that. That. But they're just a little bit too far behind. I, I think. I think a better use of pest. I mean, you got the Greek boats. They are good, but there's just so few of them. They got four boats. I think DoD is gonna push through here. Got this villager. Gotta watch out. Oh, she's gonna live. She's gonna live. She's a hero. Hero in. But. I like to see him fall back a little bit further here. Find under more dock fire. So you got the Greek boats with a little bit more range. This is a nice spot for ATB to fight here. Um, just got to be careful. Like they see these boats chasing it isn't good. You want to keep your your line right around here so that you've got four docks shooting. Um, but you can see the huge military disadvantage and ATB is holding up here for now. But I don't think it's. Yeah, they're gonna get pushed off and getting pushed off of water pretty quickly I think is gonna be a quick pretty quick transition to an end of the game here I think oh we got it got a bill kill you no, know didn't quite kill it oh no I think you if he could locust, <laughs> locust. If he could pestilence this, it would have stopped two players from building boats. And it's all about just that snowball.
starts small and just gets bigger and bigger and eventually it's just a big boat avalanche of an advantage and I don't think it's advan- well building the towers by the docks the problem is that's a lot of resources that you'd be spending just to win one spot and again fighting here there's really nothing to defend like there's no water there's no fish here so I think if ATB puts towers here DOD just ignores this and just fights back here and then just stops uh, ATB from being out of water anyway uh, but we're gonna have the land transition here and we got flame is kind of getting run around here we've Good got morning. no army for him Shelty is already transitioning let's take a look and turn the uh, fog of war off and see what we've got we've got Raha Kanara grabbing a second town center as is Fox also Scotty Sheltian on the front is going more of land attack. Um, we're gonna. It's, I think this transition is probably gonna be the hardest for the Greek. He does have a nice hunt pack back here, and so does have a couple boar and some chickens too. I'm kind of surprised that he's farming so early when he still has a decent amount of natural resources to fall back on. Nice little raids here to keep the fish idle. Um, I'd like to see some more fish. I mean, we've got quite a bit of fish in the back here. Um, now, winning the water isn't completely the end. As, as you can see, the fish on this map isn't super great. Um, so it's not like they're really getting a ton of fish, but every little bit helps. Uh, for sure. Every little bit helps. Losing your boats here. We got the big pressure here. We got the Cyclops and the hero is uh, fending off this attack for now so I think we'll see this kind of dwindle or linger along into like a mid to late game um, but it'll be a dot ahead and so dot will be grabbing town centers first because they can afford the extra villagers because of the fish and so those town centers will allow DOD to age up faster get better units sooner and then they'll kind of push through so you'll probably see DOD playing kind of safe here you might even see a kind of a stop to aggression at this point and just a little bit of just maybe raiding to keep HV busy oh this uh, rocket arm is a little bit out of position here you're gonna lose some boats oh yep 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 they're not boats there's some cheer ballista um, so that's you know, cheer ballista what is it, 200 resources? Yeah, that's 200 resources. That's about that's 400 resources that he just lost for no reason. And I might even just pick off this next one and then run away. Ah, uh, nope, retreat, retreat. Okay, okay. All right. Okay. Fishing is all done for ATB. You got this one last, <laughs> the last, last of the Mohicans right here. Mr. Boat. Floating around with his 80s Shireem. Just trying to single handedly win the water. Oh man. Yeah, Shelty, he, he's just kinda. No, oh, Fox is here too. But you got, you got all the uh, Sentinels here. I, I think you will just see a little bit of a stagnation of the game while BOD takes town centers. We can see Scotty and Fox are both at three town centers. Shelty grabbing the next one. We have some confusion here. Because, um, yeah, this town center was Shelty's. So Fox being a real greedy guy stole Shelty's town center, which that's no big deal. It's the only last town center is down here. Um, do, 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 okay, they do know us there. So we see some fighting still. Pressing fishing upgrades. Yep, that's good, that's good. Eco upgrades. Eh, this line, it's acceptable. Decent. Flame might be in a bad spot. Yeah, he's only got plow. And we'd like to see these towers get upgraded. H3 Hyperion already for Sky. They're defending this. Dot's being a little bit more aggressive than I thought they'd be. Oh, he's gonna switch over to here. Okay. Were the gods blind pick on this? I believe they were, yes. 
believe so. Saw so Chaos get used in here. Oh, he Chaos, he did not get the Cyclops. He got a Promethean, it looks like, yeah. So, kind of a random Chaos really doesn't accomplish much. You kind of want to use it. <laughs> Toss that Chaos unit, just because. And got a raid coming in for Sheltie. He's got to be careful, though, of this army. If this wall gets finished off, Sheltie's going to be kind of surrounded, and he could lose his entire army. Watch out for your bills. Zemchi with the subscription, eight months in a row. Thank you, thank you, my man. Appreciate it. And yeah, Sheltie's now trapped. I would like to see a time shift here. You could time shift these units and get them completely stuck. Hey! Not the right building, though. Should have time shifted the barracks to block some more room, so they slide through. All right, all right. Nice attempt, nice attempt, good thought. What do we got down here, though? I mean, you still got the pressure getting put on. Anybody else aging up? No, let's see, we got Fox aging up and Scotty aged up as well. So, uh, time is running out for ATV, I think. I, I, the only way I think they can win is if they're somehow able to hold in the Hades late game just goes off crazy. But I don't think they're going to be able to hold. I don't think so. We still got these random Terma. They're almost all dead, actually. I don't know why. Wait, okay. Here, hey, Rock and I need to come over here and help out a little bit. Uh-huh. Well, when you see Blind Pick, there is some question as to whether or not it allows for more gods to be used or less. In a way, and here we've got the Implode being used. This is how many units it can suck in. It does just a certain amount of damage to each unit. It's a flat rate. They're trying to run away. It's not really going to get a ton of units. I'm going to suck in some villies. It's not going to kill the town center. Kill a few towers, does some damage, doesn't actually hurt the sentinels because they're considered a unit, from my understanding, maybe, for implodes purposes. Um, but uh, <laughs> these villagers ran right down here to be safe from the implode, and now they're not safe anymore. They gotta fall back, and we can see the score differential just because DoD is just way ahead in economy. They're even grabbing this four town center. Fox is going, or Scotty is going for the five town center grab there. And ATV just quite a bit behind. Oh, they didn't even scout this back town center either. Ooh, that hurts. That hurts. Not going to make a difference. It all just went down to that early water fight here. But now we're going to have 12 to 7 town centers. Not going to work out. Scotty the 5 TC king there, the yacht and hole. So on the five town centers, I've, on, I've only seen a few times to come back from that. Watch, I had a, had, had a game like that previously on my stream. Um, but yeah, Scotty playing really well here. Look at his score, 3,800. Fantastic. And I think we're about ready to be at the end game. We've got a lot of destroyers coming in here. There's just not enough help from the allies. Who's in the water like that? Didn't quite fall behind too soon. Here's another Atlas, another implode. Suck some units in. There's really not a ton to get though. I mean, there's not an army here, but so I'm not gonna suck in a lot. We'll see if it has enough damage to kill the towers though. Maybe, maybe not. It wasn't a lot. Okay. Ah! Well, it flattened everything. All right. The half damage town center just gets absolutely demolished by that. Destroyed. So, Flame is basically out of the game. Really good aggression by uh, Dot. I thought they'd be just a slight bit more passive. Um, but they kept the aggression up. They were, they were smelling blood. There, they, they had blood in the in the air, and whoo -wee. And 
ended up not being a super close game. Look at Jonesy in the chat. That Skatey grabbing six times there. We lost the score lead though. He lost the score lead. Well, I think it's pretty apparent that we are gonna see Deities of Death versus F2 in the finals. Um, it should be played this week. Player, are you still in the chat? Well, green, when I think losing water is pretty significant of a loss for Greek. I think it affects Greek more than it affects an Atlantean. Um, but I feel like, though, he was behind on the uh, the boat construction as well. And had some... <laughs> another implode. Why not? The implode is so cool. Implode is so cool. Oh, man. Wait, once this game gets done, I'm going to talk to you guys real quick about the last F2 versus Dodd meeting in the finals. Um, clearly I remember. Uh, but here's the last Vortex, or not Vortex. Yeah, Mr. Boat I did think was a little slow to get water. And as we noticed, there was some a little bit of negative micromanagement on water, and he lost a good bit of, of boats. But I feel like with the better locust, locust, the better pestilence here. I think they could have just pushed through because that would have been two whole players not building boats for a minute. And maybe they wanted to get the temples, but I don't, I, I don't think that was it. And they knew about this one or this one dock. They could have. Ooh, looking like Brazil against Japan. Well, I'm, I'm not familiar with that result, but I would assume that Brazil would smoke Japan. And oh, Sheltie's grabbing this town center because I still don't think ATV has even scouted it. They haven't even scouted their back town center yet. And ATV, this is the last game. Uh, they're probably going to delay, um, hoping for some sort of miracle. Um, like, I don't know. Some sort of natural disaster that makes it so that uh, every single player on DoD is unable to continue. Um, maybe that's their their goal. They do have an earthquake that can maybe be used here. Demolish this. Got okay. He's going for a, the attempt at the magical underworld plus earthquake. It looks like. And Sheltie is still sitting around in uh, age three. Interesting. Yeah, here comes the Eclipse. Such a massive god power. Ah, uh, just the just the the flex Eclipse there. And that is it. G G Flame Novelli has bills. They're all right here. G G. Well played by Dodd. Um, they've played really well in these playoffs. Better than I thought they would. Um, because they aren't. They haven't been, some of their players haven't been super active. Um, did I say Eclipse? I meant Earthquake. You know what I mean. Jeez, guys. But GG's, that's it. DOD plays against F2 in the finals. Now, let's take a quick look at the post game. I think the big thing is to look at military early on. You see, it was about equal, um, but then this is when the boats just stopped coming. And you can see Flame got kicked off of water pretty quick as the front player. Rock and Arnold wasn't quite there, and Mr. Boat wasn't quite the Mr. Boat that they needed. I did not say Eclipse. You guys lie. All of you. Fake news. Fake news. Um, yeah, Mr. Boat needed to be the Mr. Boat, but wasn't quite. Well, 3 to 1. I thought it'd be 3 to 2. 3 to 1. It was GG's. It was, it was a nice set of games. Um, hopefully we'll see um, really nice games in um, the finals. So, my prediction for the finals. D&D played, D D D of Death here played really well. They've impressed me. And we also have the return of Scotty, who is really good. Um, I hate to say this uh, good player in the chat, but I think with the way I saw these games go I think DOD might win I'm gonna give them a three to two victory uh, I think um I think F2 will win on F2's home map I think F2 will win on the Nile Delta map I think DOD will take the rest 
but we'll see. So, real quick tidbit of history for you guys. And um, uh, <laughs> reason to care. Well, there's your reason right there. A little bit of history. So, we're in season 31. Three seasons ago, 28, we had Deities of Death versus F2 in the finals. In the finals! And back then, we had a, a, a F2 threw in a uh, secret player who hadn't played all season. Showed up for the finals. His name was Chrono JJ. And in the finals, player Green Sea Squash and Chrono JJ defeated DOD 3 to 0. A sweep. It was a massacre. All three games, just utter destruction. I would like to say I uh, was the carry, um, but uh, I wasn't. Player in Green Seas played really well. Really, our strategy was just that I would not lose while Player in Green Sea would win, and that's what happened in all the games. So uh, that's how that's how it was. The last time DUD and uh, F2 met in the finals, it was an F2 3-0 sweep. But right now, F2 does not have me. So that's strike one, and they don't have green sea squash in the finals. That's strike two. Uh, one more strike, and they are out, so we'll see. Well, that, I, actually, I watched all the three of those games the other day. <laughs> I, I did okay in team migration. I was way Sid pop, though. Um, but uh, anyway, we shall see how it happens. And I tell you what, the quotes in chat last series when it was F2 versus DUD when they saw JJ was playing. There were a lot of comments about F2 was going to lose because JJ was playing. I should actually go through the chat and just list all of the negative comments because they were all sorts of negative comments just over and over and over all three games and in the end it was three to zero and all of a sudden everybody was like oh F2 won. Oh, oh maybe it wasn't such a bad idea. Big jerks. A bunch of jerks in the chat. But let's take a look at this post game quick. We can see economically losing the water just becomes huge. You lose your military advantage as well. Whew. It's never were able to come back from the military. But anyway, so that is it for tonight as far as uh, right now. I may be back a lot later. Um, but uh, real quick, just for, for you guys, before we go, let's not forget the... 1v1 league that we've got coming up starting in a week. I've got a link for you guys. I'll throw in your in the uh, chat real quick. Uh, it's on Discord. It's a 1v1 league, uh, which hoping we're hoping that uh, will run for a while. Me and Boyt are kind of uh, spearheading the operation, and it should be a good time by all. Uh, we're looking to get about 32 players. I think right now we're at around 23, 24 signed up. Um, so got room for a few more. Um, what is this? Maybe we see these get what is this clip before I click on it? If it's a good clip, I'll maybe uh, show it and uh... oh. <laughs> All right, yeah, let's let's uh, let's show this clip. So the last time so F2 did play DOD in the regular season and beating them two to zero So maybe I'm being crazy saying that F2 is going to lose but um, real quick before I sign off got a clip for you guys uh, for from the, uh, the last time DOD played F2. Um, so this is in the regular season. We've got oh Shelby with some wolves, and they come along and run into Tajos. Enjoy a bit of what I did here. <laughs> oh man, the best part is like Joe just doesn't even completely notice, or if he did just wasn't it wasn't it oh man even the hyena the this best part one, they were trying to even the best part was the hyena getting in right at the end but man that what a massacre and will that be the same massacre we get uh in a week it will be again the f2 versus dod massacre or will it be completely different we shall see it should be a good series there uh 
saw a few people whining about the maps, but I think the maps are pretty awesome. It'll be fun to see the maps getting played. That's it for tonight, guys. I'll catch you guys. I know I'll stream again tomorrow night for sure. Yeah, even Black Adder enjoyed it. Who doesn't enjoy that? But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed a good set of matches tonight. Hopefully even better. I'd like to see a 3-2 to two finals. If we can make it happen. I'll catch you guys later. Have a great rest of your day, night, week, whatever it is. Adios.